Here I want to discuss how the Laplace transform can sometimes be used to evaluate certain kinds of infinite integral. I've prepared in advance the definition of the Laplace transform for a function little f of t. It's just the integral from 0 to infinity of f multiplied by the negative exponential e to the minus st. s is assumed to be positive. For many functions this integral can be evaluated and a formula found to describe the answer. Since t is an integration variable, the integral only depends on the variable s, and so we often write capital F of s to be the Laplace transform for little f of t. Now suppose someone asks you to evaluate the following integral. e to the minus 5t times t. Actually, it's not so very hard to do this integral using integration by parts, but I want to show you how it can be done with a Laplace transform. The beauty of a Laplace transform, and its great power, is in the fact that people in the past have calculated many, many different integrals and tabulated them. So rather than doing an integration, all you have to do is look up a result in a book of tables. Let's compare the integral we've got with the Laplace transform. The integral has a 5 in, where the Laplace transform has an s. It looks like the f of t should be regarded as the t. So let's write down the Laplace transform of the function t. It is certainly the integral from 0 to infinity, e to the minus st times t dt. And all we have to do is look up the Laplace transform of the function t in our tables to find that that is 1 over s squared. Now compare it to our actual integral. As we already noted, the only difference is that we had a 5 instead of an s. That means all we have to do is substitute s equals 5 in the 1 over s squared formula. The answer? Well, 1 over 25. Let's do another one. This time let's involve a sine. Suppose someone asks you to do integral 0 to infinity e to the minus 3t sine 4t dt. This reminds us of the Laplace transform for sine, and usually that's given with an argument at. In fact, the Laplace transform for sine at is the integral 0 to infinity e to the minus st sine at dt. And we have a formula for this, which we can look up in our tables. It's simply a over s squared plus a squared. Now let's compare our Laplace transform with the integral we've actually got. It looks like we need to substitute s equals 3 and a equals 4. That's easy to do, and we will find that the answer for our integral must be 4 over 3 squared plus 4 squared which is 4 over 25. So far these have been reasonably easy. Let's look at one that's just a little bit more complicated. I want to remind you about a formula for Laplace transforms. If the Laplace transform for the function f is capital F of s, then if inside the Laplace transform we decide to multiply by t, that's equivalent to a negative differentiation on the capital F of S. Let's now look at a following integral. t e to the minus 2t sine 60 dt. This integral has a t in it, so it should be suggesting to us that we might have to do minus d by ds of a Laplace transform. We need to identify the little f of t. 
little f of t probably should be the sine 6t. So let's think about the Laplace transform of sine 6t. It's 0 to infinity e to the minus st sine 6t dt which is 6 over s squared plus 6 squared. But now the integral we actually want has a t multiplying inside as well as the sine. What we need to do is take minus d by ds of the Laplace transform we've just worked out. Minus d by ds of 6 over s squared plus 36. It's just a matter of using the quotient rule correctly and the answer we get will have s squared plus 36 all squared on the bottom and on the top 12s using the quotient rule. OK, so this answer that we've just got must be equal to the Laplace transform of t sine 6t e to the minus st in the integral. And so what we now need to do to compare with our integral, which had a e to the minus 2t in it, is to put s equal to 2. That gives 24 over 4 plus 36 all squared, which is 24, and 40 squared is 1,600. Or simplifying by cancellation, 6 over 400, which is 3 over 200.